square t by dy square plus mu by k du by dy whole square equal to 0. How did you get this that term from the phi term? Huh? You have the phi term with you. you huh? In that, if you look at the phi, you have the phi term with you or no? So, if you look at that, all del by del x terms vanish, del by del z terms vanish, v terms vanish, w terms vanish. All you have is from that second del u by del y plus del v by del x whole square. From that particular term, <coughs> del u by del y whole square, whole square remains. So, now look at the expression now, the energy equation, the entire set. Now, all of them actually are dif ordinary differential equations. This is point number one you should uh, notice, observe, appreciate a complete set of nonlinear partial differential <coughs> equations in its entirety by in this particular case of this particular physical model we have taken with certain fairly reasonable, acceptable, justifiable assumptions is brought down to the simplest. We cannot get, in, get anything more simpler than this in convection. And dv by dy equal to 0 says v equal to 0, the solution is already there with, with the boundary conditions of course. Um, uh, d square u by dy square equal to 0 remains, uh, the y component is a hydrostatic pressure uh, description, <coughs> um, w is 0 everywhere and then you are only two terms in the energy equation. So, now you can change all the dou u by dy, dou t by dy to simply du by dy, dt by dy, number one. This actually tells you how before you formulate, a, during the formulation of the problem, you, you think what assumptions are justifiable. That is the first thing you should, you should there is no necessity for directly hitting the uh, complex uh, partial differential equations. Also, please understand these were all done when there were no computers. They said, how do we simplify the problem for our hand calculations? Computers came in only in the 40s, late early 40s during the second world war. It was basically developed by the Manhattan project basically, the nuclear project. Before that, what were they doing? And also that was the time when heat transfer was really picking up. Heat transfer is a subject to be taught in colleges came only in the 1960s actually. If you look at the first book by Jacob Hawkins, 1955 or so, that is the very first textbook for heat transfer. Nobody, people did not know what to put into that. Later, it has now come to the Incropara, David and Bejan level action. So, assume, making assumptions simplifications was a necessity at that time. And this apparently simple problem, you can make it into a three dimensional thing. If you do not put in that del by del x tends to 0, <coughs> del by del z tends to 0, it becomes a right solution starting from the leading edge to the trailing edge and the two sides. What you have done is, I will not worry about the flow near the edges. Always you see, even when you do the experiments, you will see near the edges, you will have two dimensionality, three dimensionality. In a, what do you think is a one dimensional flow, there will be two dimensionality. What do you think is a two dimensional flow is a three dimensionality and boundary layer assumptions are not valid very close to the leading edge as all of you know. There are certain complications both physical and mathematical. So, first take away from as far as I am concerned is first of all the procedure of a convection problem starting from the physical model. The, the second take away is how do I simplify before I start solving. Now, you have computers and codes, so you write down the how many times have you really written down the physical model to really hit the. Uh, 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 mathematical model. You simply say, oh, flat plate, you start del u by del x plus del v by del equal, equal to 0 and start putting your boundary conditions. Boundary conditions, if you look at this, velocity conditions are fixed, not much can be done, either it is 0 or it takes the velocity conditions of the plate. But look at the thermal. We have now taken, uh, we did not write it down, please write it down, isothermal plates that uh, it skipped my mind. Both are isothermal, but if you look at the thermal part of it, you can put various kinds of boundary conditions on both the plates with various combinations, both isothermal, both non isothermal, one isothermal, one non isothermal, one with constant heat flux, both with constant heat flux, one adiabatic, how many kinds of boundary conditions you can have combinations. Each one of those boundary conditions will give you a different solution for the same set of equations. 
any number of times I will be repeating this the importance of formulating the problem rightly. Formulation of the problem correctly is 50 percent of the solution. Especially it is true important rather when you hit the numerical techniques when you use certain certain equations appear to give you the right solution, but they are really not the right solution because your numerical equivalents that you have written do not really <coughs> simulate the mathematical equation that you have written. So, whenever you write numerical uh, uh, you use numerical methods you should check for most of the time you check for only for convergence stability criteria you have to develop, but third most important thing is consistency whether your finite difference or finite element representation of the partial differential equation or load is consistent with that equation. Because of these round off errors and truncation errors sometimes what you think is the right finite difference formulation will simply go off in a different direction, but give you a convergent stable solution. This has been experience of many people. It would not happen in every case, but there are situations where this happens you should bear in mind. So, formulation of the problem is extremely important, simplification is extremely important. I like this problem because in its entirety you can get this idea of what simplification. All solutions for neighbor Stokes equations ba is based on simplification. What is Prandtl's boundary layer? This is simplification. Here we did not invoke the boundary layer, it is not necessary. We have solved the entire neighbor Stokes equations in all its side. Then you can of course add the heat transfer, what is it called? Heat generation term you can add. We have kept a very important term in the energy equation the viscous dissipation we will see later. Now, write down your you have written the boundary conditions. So, these four equations with the boundary condition u equal to 0, v equal to 0, w equal to 0 at the wall the bottom wall, t equal to t naught at the bottom wall, u equal to u 1 at the top wall, v equal to 0, w equal to 0 at the top wall these are the boundary conditions. There are no initial conditions because we have taken as a steady state. Now, let us proceed I hope some of you have solved it, but let us go step by step solve the velocity equation. In any heat transfer problem first you have to solve the velocity equation because you require that for the energy equation. In the case of uh, force convection these are different in the case of free convection they have to be solved together. So, what is the solution d square u by dy square equal to 0 o e equal to 0 u equal to 0 o e equal to l u equal to u 1. So, now, this, this also tells you how when you are actually applying a numerical technique to a partial differential equation what are you doing actually uh, after putting in the finite difference for finite difference or finite element then you go ahead with the solution point by point actually uh, you are I will I'll, I want you to fill you are dash the partial differential equation you are dash doing this to the no, 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 no. When you get the solution, a differential equation, what should you do for you to get the solution? Huh? No, that is a numeric. Nah, that is your, you are directly jumping to new uh, discretization because you want to use a numerical method. Even after that, when you really solve, what does a PDE do? Partial differential equation. Let us take T for example, dependent value. It is a function of x, y, z and tau and all. What is the difference between a PDE and a finite difference equation? Finite difference equation of that PDE, what is the difference? What do you get when you solve these things in terms of the solution? Tell me. Where? Where? Ah, in the other one? So, you are now I will to save time, you are integrating, you are integrating the PDE you have to integrate. Now, you do that here that is what I am saying d square u by dy square twice you have to integrate and two constants the two boundary conditions you must have at y equal to 0 y equal to 1. Please by looking at the equation you should, you should be able to actually write <coughs> it is nothing but u by u 1 is equal to. So, now we will go to uh, what is this step now solution now for a uh, now we are actually going to the solution. So, the momentum equation that is the I, I will say velocity profile <coughs> is nothing but u by u 1 equal to please see and what does this say what kind of equation is this 
now we use the word whatever you used earlier the solution now is linear so plot this please in your physical model what it says is at any given uh, this is let us say x here so here this value here is u1 and this is 0 again i want you to appreciate this such a originally what we thought was extremely non linear it is a linear profile basically so one more point v equal to 0 everywhere we have said w equal to 0 everywhere u is this profile now you come out with a name for this what kind of a flow is this it is not a potential flow it is not a boundary layer flow okay all the layers are uh, can you look at this all the layer uh, st stream layers are to each other in what fashion are they oriented to each other uh, it's, it's parallel flow v equal to 0 w equal to 0 it is simply a parallel flow number 1 it is also a fully developed flow it is not going to change del u by del x equal to 0 so it is a parallel flow it is a parallel plate geometry it is okay but you can have nonlinear uh, velocity profile in parallel plates as you will see later and this happens only for dp by dx equal to 0 please see that so therefore it is called a simple or plain quiet flow and therefore you get a linear velocity profile number 1 it is also called a parallel flow as different from boundary layer flow the stream lines are all parallel to each other this is something again you get from this profile very easy the, the really exciting thing is go to the temperature profile so write down the energy equation d square t by dy square plus mu by k du by dy whole square equal to 0 <coughs> boundary conditions at y equal to 0 t equal to t naught y equal to l t equal to t1 we have not said what are the relative values of t0 and t1 leave it let us see what happens later now we have to integrate this twice i i had yesterday asked you to do this but some of you have not done go ahead and do it please this actual procedure that you follow this is a classical solution now classical complete exact solution no approximations you get two constants take two minutes give me an expression for t of y equal to what t is function of only y now finished can you give me the terms i'll write down tell me plus t1 plus t1 into y by t1 into can you y by is it uh, minus uh, mu by k uh, plus bracket y by l minus y by l whole square. What is it? Minus is it? No, y by l. Here. Bracket, bracket. Y by l minus y by l square something else is missing here mu u square by 2k yeah this is okay 
is this minus or plus? Check it out, or you should. Did you all of you get this? This equation is important because you have to differentiate it later, two three times. Tell me. You know, some uh, manipulation of this can be done. I am not sure. I'll write. How many of you got this? Don't copy that. Don't. I, I'm checking whether it's right or not, uh, wrong. But I'll give you my uh, the, the expression. You check it out. Maybe a slight rearrangement will be all right. <coughs> Please check this out. T naught. That is okay. Actually, this is also okay. Here, please see whether we would like to correct it. Please check whether something is missing there. And then this sign also. Check it out, please. We will reorganize it again later for something else. Something is missing there, or is it okay? T y equal to T naught plus mu by 2 k u 1 square y by L y minus y square by L square plus T 1 minus T naught y by L. Did you miss one term there? Check it out. How is it? Somebody tell me this second one is right, then I will proceed. Because you gave me the first answer, I am asking you. Everything is right except that, that T naught was missing. T 1 y by L minus T naught that, huh? just check it out. Okay. Now you see a little bit. This is this is the equation which. Please keep it. Give it a number. I don't know what is the number of this. Um, yesterday what was it? Can you give me a number? Okay, today I'll give you this number. Now you see you have got a y by l. Without you are trying for it, you have got a non-dimensional distance now. Hmm? Can you get a non-dimensional temperature difference by Riemann? by manipulating this. Just look at that expression. There is a T here, which is what we want. There is a T naught. There is a T 1 minus T naught. So, I can rewrite this expression as T of y minus T naught. Bring T 1 minus T naught to the left hand side. Now, you have a non-dimensional temperature difference. It is not non-dimensional temperature. It is non-dimensional temperature difference. Always non dimensionalization makes things easier for various reasons. Now, so this is y by L is y by L plus this whole thing divided by see now you have got a non dimensional temperature different temperature in the non dimensional form as a function of a non dimensional distance, which is very nice on its own, it is coming out slight manipulation and as a function of the 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 fluid the viscosity the velocity the thermal conductivity hmm? we will do a small further manipulation and see something else very important will come out and then we'll go further can you okay temperature difference is non dimensionalized this is non dimensionalized. Therefore, one would think this term is non dimensional. 
please write down what this term would be mu u1 square by 2k t1 minus t0 am i communicating here am i communicating please that term i am saying t minus t0 by t1 minus t0 you have your y by l why don't we put the other see whether non dimensionalization possible what is that term mu u square by 2k is there and you have divided by t1 minus t0 how can you non dimensionalize what is it that you can do here i'll give you a hint you will get a very well known non dimensional number out of this by slight manipulation huh? um you are jumping fine fine we'll get the cut but a, a more uh, familiar non dimensional number you have a mu you have a k how to get a prandtl number there multiply divided by cp and now you see what you are getting only now you get the cut number so now you will see the non dimensional temperature difference can you give me the second term here t minus t0 by t1 minus t0 equal to y by l plus mu cp by k is now uh, prandtl number then what else you have there so you have mu cp by k half is there of course you have u1 square t1 minus t0 is there you have multiplied and divided it by cp now now look at that prandtl number you know now you are coming out with a new non dimensional number you did not try for it it is coming on its own with a slight manipulation and what is that number this number is the eckert number we didn't plan to get this we didn't say we'll get a eckert number even when they did it first time they didn't plan for eckert number it was that name was given that's a different matter later but you see how from again and again i i i, I emphasize this from very simple problem you are coming out with prandtl number you knew that of course eckert number is very new and it comes out because of u1 look at the expression u1 square by cp delta t what is the physical significance of a prandtl number mu cp by k what is the physical significance of the eckert number u1 square by cp delta t cp delta t is a imposed temperature difference so cp is a imposed thermal energy kind of a thing and what is u1 square it's a kinetic energy so kinetic energy divided by a imposed thermal energy form there cp into actually it is cpt not minus cpt1 so there is a certain in a problem in this problem there is a certain energy in terms of cpt that is now being related to the velocity of the plate if the if the plate were stationary it would not have come up in fact that would be zero obviously so a new number has come up now called eckert some books give you the symbol as ec some give you as a symbol e you use as you like but now you just change the final equation as y by l plus half prandtl eckert into y by l minus y square by square. you don't have to do that but this gives you a new you can visually see the new non dimensional number and you also realize that it is important only when u1 is significant u1 can be zero then it's not significant you can u1 can be very small value it has its own role but you also know it changes with u1 square so from 5 meters per second u1 you go to 10 the effect is squared actually so that means a small change in the velocity finite change will have a very that power law dependent effect on the eckert number which is nothing but the manifestation of the u1 square the kinetic energy if you go into the previous one here this this actually is much more according to me um representative of the situation mu u1 square 
we are talking about viscous dissipation. If you look at only u n square, it is kinetic energy that is also right, but the real effect is the viscous dissipation is mu u 1 square and that can be you know mu is already here in the Prandtl number. So, you can try to give it a physical uh, significance this is extremely important. Why do we do all this? We would like to know the temperature difference. By the way, suppose you have u 1 equal to 0 here, what is the temperature profile? Linear, same thing. In fact, the velocity profile is linear, temperature profile is linear when u equal to 0, that means it is simply conduction, it is just conduction that is happening. The moment you start adding u 1, convection is coming into picture, the profile is becoming nonlinear. This is a nonlinear term now, second term is u 1 squared is being introduced. <coughs> now, this is the temperature profile. After getting the temperature profile in a convection problem, what is it that we want to do? Huh? Find out. What is the heat transfer at the top plate? What is the heat transfer at the bottom plate? Get the expression. How do we do this? Um, therefore, you should first get, now I will say this is step uh, whatever, now I have lost track of this, heat transfer. heat transfer q, I will say flux equal to minus k dt, I can easily write dt by dy, there is no problem, not necessarily del t by del y. This is a general expression, if I put q 0 here, this is the wall, so I have to put dt by dy at y equal to 0 and flux at L at the top plate is minus k dt by dy at y equal to L. Can you get two simple expressions? First, first get d, dt by dy and get two expressions please. That will complete this part of the Kuwait problem. There are two more important things which I want to refer to. <coughs> get a general expression for dt by dy from the T equation. You know how to do this, is not it? What I will do? You do it. It will take some time. I will give the expressions, check it out, but I want you to do it separately. Q 0 double dash, the heat transfer at the wall, hmm? this is equal to minus mu u 1 square by 2 k, uh, 2 L sorry, minus k by L T L minus T naught, T 1 minus T naught minus mu u 1 square by 2 L minus k by L t 1 minus t naught and the heat transfer at the <coughs> top wall is plus mu 1 square by 2 L minus please check it out. Eh? So, you get the temperature profile then take d t by d y, d t by d y at 0 multiply by k minus k, you get the heat transfer at the bottom wall and then heat transfer at the top wall minus k d t by d y at y equal to L. This is all fine. <coughs> These are all equations, but you have to have numbers finally. Hmm? So, what I will do, I will give you a very simple problem. I want all of you to write a simple program and now study this solution for the effect of various variables here. Tell me looking at these expressions, what are the important variables that you that affect the heat transfer? Number 1, huh? okay. we will give the velocity. So, all other conditions being the same, u 1 controls the heat transfer, influences the heat transfer. Then what else? Suppose I keep u 1 constant, fluid, Prandtl number, okay, then temperature difference, temperature difference, right. Of 
course, you have to say L, but we will fix L now. I want you to do the following please, take a problem, I want you to write uh, uh, a small program for this. Hmm? We have these two plates, distance small, we have never talked about what is L actually. Let us take this L equal to 3 millimeters and this is U1, please switch off your mobiles please, 10 meters per second. Uh, yeah, we will see the Prandtl number here. Um, this is at uh, 10 degrees yeah, T0, 10, T1, 30. Is everything there? Prandtl number. Huh? Now, I want you to do this. Take air here, Prandtl number. Take water. Take what is referred to as engine oil. Different kinds of oil are there. Fuel oil, engine oil. That gives the Prandtl number. With these conditions, please get the uh, uh, temperature profile, but basically the heat transfers at the two walls. Find out what is the effect of Prandtl number. Then in the same program, please change this U1 up to 100 meters per second or so in 10 meters per second intervals. Find out what is the effect of this velocity. Okay. Now, keep it at 10 meters per second, change the um, bottom temperature T0, take 5 degrees centigrade and 50 degrees centigrade. You get the point what I am trying to do here. Prandtl number, 3 Prandtl numbers, air, water, and oil, <coughs> higher velocities, 10 meters per second is very small. Temperature, you, you see what I have done, the first problem I have given is 10 degrees centigrade, keeping that as 30. Why I have uh, given you 5 and uh, 50? Okay. If I take 50 here, what is the difference between this problem and that problem? Huh? This is 30 and 10, so T1 is greater than T0. Actually, what you could do, you could also take 30 degrees, T1 equal to T0, and then T0 greater than T1. See the difference in heat transfers. But actually there is a very important application of this and therefore, another factor is extremely important for us to calculate. The moment there is a non-linearity in the temperature profile, uh, can, you, can you visualize uh, another factor which comes into, may come into picture, another kind of a temperature within the fluid. By the way, please understand all this temperature profile is for the fluid, plate temperatures are fixed. If there is a non-linearity, what would you like to look at um, um, as a means of, uh, as, a, as a way of understanding the problem? Linear, you know how it is. Now, there is a non-linear thing. Whenever there is a non-linearity, we would like to find out one particular, uh, um, I, I do not know whether I am able to communicate this question properly. You want to look at something else in terms of the temperature profile. How does it Will it continuously, non-linearly vary in one direction? I mean, I am trying to give a hint. Or could there be a, in the curve, what do you expect? You have uh, 10 degrees at the bottom and 30 at the top. Hmm? 
linear profile you can easily say how it is. How would be the non-linear profile? I will come to that you have to plot it then only maybe understand. Okay, maybe I am I am not able to come in let me assume I am not able to communicate the problem I will state it. What is the maximum temperature in the fluid? Find it out. Find out if if there were to be maximum temperature because it is a nonlinear problem. Exact the answer is actually my reason for asking you to do this. How do you find out whether there is a maximum or a minimum? What do you do to the equation? Huh? What differentiate what? So, d t by d y should be what? Find out if there is a d t by d y equal to 0 at what condition? How do you find out whether it is a maximum or a minimum? Hmm? Do that. See if there is a maximum and if it is there find out if there is a maximum what would you like to find out? First of all find out whether there is a maximum. If there is a maximum what is the next question that should arise in your mind? Huh? Okay, but something else related to this? Huh? Please find this out. This is very important. And therefore, I want you to say what is the T maximum for air, for water, for oil? Oils can be anything. Prandtl number from thousand to fifty thousand. If, if you want, you can check it out. But take any one or two Prandtl numbers, it is okay. And please write a small program and plot all these things. We go back to the temperature profile. How do we plot? Plot the temperature profile. What should be the ordinate and the abscissa? What can be? Look at the physical problem and how do you want the profile to be plotted? What should be the abscissa? What should be the ordinate? Uh, that is fine. So, where do you want theta? Where do you want to looking at the problem which would be okay for you? So, you please plot hmm? what will be the maximum value of y by l? Of course, this is 0. What is the maximum value of y by l? What is this? What is the linear profile? If there is no u1, u1 is 0, static plate, how will this be? Here to where will it go there? What I want you to do is really plot when I say u1 equal to 0, look at this expression, please theta if this is theta if we want to refer to it theta equal to y by l <coughs> that profile is for second term being absent. The moment I bring in u 1 that means Eckert is coming into picture. Tell me <coughs> give me the effect of prandtl eckert number that will give the effect of the u 1 more importantly viscous dissipation. What numbers can it take? Huh? You do not know, you can assume now at this point in time. I am going to suggest to you use this expression. Now, this is a very nice non dimensional expression, it came off just like that. Plot y by l <coughs> and this for various Prandt Leckert numbers. Prandt Leckert numbers. And I want to convey to you unless you plot it, you will not understand what I want to talk about in the next class. Please do this. Not only plot it, think about it, what is happening. I have to still bring out <coughs> two important uh 
<coughs> aspects of this whole problem. We'll do it on Monday, no problem. I'm not. I'm not in a hurry. I want you to understand this, especially one, two, three concepts will come out of this, which you can then relate it to normal convection. So please plot this. Y by L plotting is no problem. It's the same thing. <coughs> y by Y by L and uh, theta are the same. U by U1 equal to Y by L, theta equal to <coughs> Y by L. So there's no problem. But for varying Prandtl Eckert number, make sure that is when you do that, you will know there is a maximum. Now I'm giving you actually the answer, but I want you to do that. It's a maximum. Find out where that maximum is. Why think about it? That is one aspect of the solution. If, if a maximum comes into picture, what is the effect of this on the heat transfer? Not the rate, heat transfer direction at the two plates. We have, when I when we said how to plot, you said something. Uh, when I asked what is the maximum temperature, you said T1. You will find it is not T1. It is something different. If it is T1, if there is no U1, because of U1, something is happening. That something is there is a maximum which occurs. I am giving you that answer, find it out at some location. But then, what is the effect of that maximum coming into? Um, first of all, why and what is the effect? That will affect, gentlemen, the direction of heat transfer itself. This is extremely important point. I want to make little bit with little bit more force in the next class. But for that, I want you to plot the theta with respect to Prandtl Eckert. Also, it is not simply Eckert, it is Prandtl Eckert. When you then fix up a Prandtl Eckert, numbers will change, that is different. But give a number to Prandtl Eckert as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In particular, tell me what happens at Prandtl Eckert equal to 2. Study that. Also, therefore, find out what happens after Prandtl Eckert equal to 2. What happens means what happens to the heat transfer, that is what I am looking at. You will find very new information coming out of this, this is very extremely, extremely important. I will ask you something else now before I leave you. Look at the quad problem. What does that look at? Look at that, please look at that. Is the bottom plate fixed? Uh, uh, there is a gap, there is a top plate which is moving, there is a temperature here, there is u equal to 0, u equal to 1. What does this, this physical model remind you of which you are more familiar with? You will be, you, that is because you have not thought, which is okay, no problem. We have said there is a plate. Suppose there is no plate, but there is a velocity. What would that problem boil down to? Look at the physical picture, look at the boundary conditions, Baba. Huh? Huh? Flat plate? Flat plate, okay. Flat plate? What is the flow there? What is the type of flow? Do not simply say flat plate, add something to that. What type of a flow on the flat plate? Sometimes you know you have to give the uh, teacher the answer that he wants, <laughs> but in different ways we can discuss about it. This point you have not thought of so far, I am making you think, requesting you to think rather. You are right, but flat plate? Huh? Boundary layer flow. Do not simply say lambda, that is also correct. That is why I want the right words to come. Look at this problem, quite problem, you thought it is all restricted, but one of the takeaways from the quiet flow is this can be related to a boundary layer flow, very simple. Bottom plate fixed, y equal to 0, u equal to 0, t equal to Tw, y equal to L is y equal to delta, u equal to u infinity whatever that is, t equal to t infinity, 
with one small qualification. What could that? You are right. Now, you can write a sketch of the boundary layer flow and compare these two. Where will this quiet flow situation will be really applicable in a boundary layer flow? In what zone? Or tell me where it is not applicable. Huh? Delta is always varying. Delta is a function. Delta is y by x root Reynolds x. Huh? Near the entry, it is not valid. Ah, I say I wanted that word. That's actually now the quiet flow is nothing but a representation of a fully developed boundary layer flow. Fully developed, I would say on a flat plate still, but you can extend it to the pipe flows later. Where after that nothing is changing, it is a constant. You can it varies as delta by x is y by x root Reynolds x x power half it varies, but as you go along half it the rate reduces. So, away from the leading edge the flow is very similar to quiet flow. Once you ap appreciate this the effect of viscous dissipation you can actually superimpose upon a boundary layer flow post convection boundary flow. And therefore, any information that comes out of it is just a modif it has to be modified for a regular flat plate. This is one of the major takeaways from looking at a quiet flow in some detail. Um, we could have done it by same, I could have given you the equations and then you say solve it, you would solve it, but I want you to please think about these things. So, that is another takeaway. Uh, we will stop here now. Monday we will meet, I will draw the profiles, solve this problem. I know you have other subjects, but also please do this. You have a uh, what is it? Uh, quiz this is a quiz week, but do this as much as possible. At least for one plant number, especially for oil, you do. I'm giving just a hint. You know why I'm saying this? This problem. Okay, tell me in 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 machines in mechanical equipment, where would you? I've given you a hint actually. Where would you apply this? Especially, therefore, look at the size of three millimeters that we have taken. This is a journal bearing problem, actually. But where is journal bearing problem? How can u one go to infinity? I mean, um, a constant u uh, one, a plate moving at u one, actually that is replaced by the journal. So that uh, you can take it as a flat plate moving continuously, and then there is a bearing. In between is now tell me why T max is important, not simply for you to do some calculations here and uh, say sir I got T max. Now re related to journal bearing problem, why is T max important? That is why I asked you to do for oil. General bearing if I put oil what is that why do I, why do I put the oil? Huh? What is the word used for that? Uh, lubrication. And for you are putting oil, why it has a certain kind of what viscosity? Now, how does temperature affect viscosity? Find out. You have to maintain the temperatures properly for the oil film for you to have that lubrication effect. Lubrication will fail under these conditions. So, find out what is Tmax. Now, you see this squared problem has a practical application, although not a very great, it is important actually, but it is not earth shattering application, but it is a very important application. You will know how to formulate the problem, how to make simplifications, how to make it the simplest of equations in convection, but how much information you can get out of it, especially in the next class after you draw the temperature profiles we will discuss a little bit further and see something very interesting that is happening there. Thank you.